What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It's the Earthmaster here on this Monday night, October 24th, 2022. It is about 9.04 p.m. California time, and the latest quake shows some activity there in Southern California. Some uh, activity definitely ramping up earlier today in the uh, South Sandwich Islands as well, where we've seen a 6.4 uh, and also some aftershock activity. Uh, first, real quick, I want to bring up uh, some activity kicking up in the Arizona skies tonight, just a few minutes ago, actually. Got a couple emails from some folks there reporting a, a meteor shooting through the sky along with a sonic boom, which is very common if it holds up through the atmosphere. Uh, looks like several people uh, reported seeing and hearing a meteor over northwest Arizona. Again, just a... Uh, a little bit ago of course this article looks like it was put out uh 0 p.m so this was put out at uh, looks like the meteor sh struck around uh, about seven o'clock so pretty cool i will leave this link if you guys want to check that out uh, not a whole lot of info on it right now but uh you know occasionally we do get these uh these meteors kicking up let me know uh, if you guys happen to see that out there in Arizona. Pretty cool. Of course, everyone seems to uh, have a camera these days, so more than likely a lot of folks did capture that. All right, uh, let's see what else we got here for the earthquake department. Southern California ramping up here a little bit. Uh, as noted, a 2.5 near the uh, Borrego Springs area of California. Just on the uh, San Jacinto Fault Zone, the Coyote Creek section, it looks like. Nothing happening on the San Andreas Fault for now. Uh, a little bit of movement throughout the uh, uh, north of the Garlock Fault structure. Most of this was from earlier this morning time frame. A little activity here in Nevada as well within the last hour, 1.1. That's uh, northwest of Tonopah, or typical swarming area stretches across here, uh, across the Candelaria Hills and Highway 3. Right now, that area only seen a little bit of swarming. Uh, over here around the Bay Area, things uh, somewhat minimal. Not a whole lot. No major swarms to take note of. Northern California, pretty quiet. Pacific Northwest, some activity outside of Mount St. Helens. We'll check out the seismograph there in just a little bit. Uh, a little bit of activity on the Devil's Mountain fault system up here, too, that kind of stretches across from the Washington to the uh, Victoria area. Uh, rest of the country, Texas, uh, some activity kicking up there. Looks like earlier tonight, 2.5, just outside of Pecos, Texas there. This one's a little bit further west, um, out around this creek area near the uh, Virginia Draw region. Let me see what's out there as far as satellite imagery goes. Uh, not for certain what that is. That looks like, um, I don't know what that is. Kind of an odd looking deal out in the desert. These look like maybe maybe they're solar. I don't I don't know. That's kind of weird. Either way, uh, within the vicinity of this 2.5, we've got a, quite a few oil pumping operations up here in operation. Uh, these look fairly new. Some ponds out there, wastewater injection wells uh, within feet. Well, a couple miles there. But if you look at the desert here, uh, you can see a lot of older roads being the uh, e erased from the satellite imagery. There is one down here. looks like some type of pond, wastewater pond, uh, within a couple thousand feet. And maybe some older ones that have, again, been eroded off of the satellite imagery. Oklahoma, uh, a little bit of movement north of Wakita into the Wakita Trend and gas and oil fields up there. One earthquake earlier this morning in the New Madrid zone. No further activity to take note of into the eastern portion of the country. Uh, Yellowstone National Park. Let me bring this up here real quick and see what we got for earthquake activity, which is continuing here over the last um, uh, last couple hours, it looks like. See some spikes there uh, indicating some very small, very small earthquake activity there at Yellowstone. Nothing major going on. Uh, over here around the Big Island, things not lighting up yet uh, within the last hour. Most of this activity from uh, looks like around 6, 7 o'clock or so. So nothing popping off here within the last couple hours. Mona Loa still swarming a little bit and Pahala area as well. Uh, up into the Alaska area, got some earthquake activity here within the last couple hours. 
uh, just outside of the Cook Inlet area, 2.1 at 16 kilometers deep. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Puerto Rico, not a whole lot. Panama area. Uh, a little bit of activity there, it looks like. That was from last night. Just about, just about ready to drop off the 24-hour map. Uh, kind of the big picture today is that 6.3 that struck down here in the South Sandwich Islands. About 81 kilometers deep into the subduction zone. Now, this is the area, right about this area right here, uh, is where that 8-pointer struck uh, last year. They also had some 6s and uh, I think a 7 or 2 in there as well. Uh, but this specific region right here is where that eight pointer struck and uh you know aftershock activity can continue for months and years to come 6.3 and a 4.9 tonight up there or i should say down there in the south sandwich trench what do we got going on over here for a newer activity um most of it uh, let's see here Actually, a lot of it, the majority of it, is from much earlier this morning time frame. 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, really haven't seen any further renewed activity. Let's see what we got going on up here. Yeah, this uh, is from earlier this morning, 6, six o'clock in the morning there for the 4.1. Uh, so still watching that. Um, I know in the EMSC model globe here, this go or map, <laughs> flat scale map, um, shows about the same except for an earthquake down here along the Kermadec Trench. Uh, but most of the activity uh, in alignment there with the USGS map. Uh, and of course the earthquake 3D globe is going to show a little bit more activity down here. Uh, I did include the GeoNet servers here for, four, uh, I think it's 4.0 and above. Or maybe I did 3.0 and above for this area. Either way, uh, they're also a data agency there in New Zealand. So... I added them into the mix here on the Earthquake 3D globe. So now we have a combination of uh, uh, USGS, EMSC, and the GeoNet servers. And of course, I can add quite a few more, but uh, for now, let's not clutter it too much. Uh, and the recent activity here is going to be in the white rings. Notice all this is red or kind of pink or kind of light red. That's all older movement. Newer activity here around the North American plate that includes Southern California and the Chile area. Uh, got a 5.0 and some other smaller quakes here in the mix, so things kind of working their way uh, throughout that area currently. Uh, see what we got for trimmer tonight. Just going to make this a real quick update. Uh, 161 up epicenters there. Uh, we're getting a little bit more into the Oregon area down in southern Oregon. A little split difference there, it looks like, between the 161 epicenters up around Seattle and also... Uh, uh, outside of Medford, underneath Medford, I should say, down there about 35, 45 kilometers deep. Uh, and while we're at it, let me check out the Mount St. Helens volcanic seismicity map here. Anyone can do this. It's pretty cool. There's some of the earthquake activity being listed there by the USGS and also the PNSN. Looks like a little bit of southward migration here of this warming activity. So we're going to key up. Uh, one of these three component broadband seismograph stations and see what we can uh, see what we can decipher and a eh, little bit of activity There's a couple small specks here on the map i'm going to go back throughout the day here yeah i can see uh, some of these earthquakes here uh uncertain as to what this is here it looks like there may be some earthquakes in the mix here but also at the same time with the amplitudes being pretty high the amplitude meaning uh, the thickness of this line here, uh, as far as that seismograph needle, so to speak, on the digital scale, looks pretty well amplified. Even to, even to pick up some smaller quakes, which is good. But also, at the same time, it could bring in some outside interference, environmental noise. This could be wind. Um, let me see what we got for a nearby station. We're going to check out this one right here. Also, a three-component broadband East Dome, Mount St. Helens and see what these guys are picking up here. That does not look uh, good at all far as the reading. Uh, yeah, that one, uh, unreliable, is the key word for that station there. Not for sure why, but uh, that one doesn't look too good. Let me check here. Rembrandt, Mount St. Helens. And this one does show a couple small spikes there in the shadows of the... Uh, 
of the seismograph readings and there's this this kind of looks like wind as well that showed up on this seismograph station uh, but far as distinct specific uh, well localized and defined earthquake activity there's only a, a handful and I think they listed them on the map so a little bit of wind events kicking off there it looks like All right, uh, let's see what else we have here. I think that's about it uh, for earthquake activity right now. Uh, let's check out the space weather events here, which are uh, lacking in entertainment, I guess. <laughs> right now it's pretty mellow. Uh, the sun here, the man on the sun is looking, well, it's kind of morphing into, um, I don't know what. Kind of looks like maybe a little mustache is growing here along with the mouth. Got the eyes here, which are kind of, uh, ooh, man, I don't know. <laughs> the man on the moon is, or the man on the sun is disappearing. But that's okay. This coronal hole will be uh, facing us here in the coming days. Got one up here already facing us, and this could bring about a little interesting uh couple nights or a couple days here soon uh, once we get the data flown in uh, as far as the amount of solar wind that could be uh, headed towards us nothing major I don't think it'll be as strong as what we've seen here just a, a couple days ago when we had a, a, a G1 class storm kick up no major solar flare activity to report solar flare potential only sits at about 45 percent still watching these sunspots here on the northeastern side of the limb of the sun here we're getting a little bit better view there's a couple of them, at least three of them this one right here right now kind of looks to be the most active uh, and complex in its field but we'll get a better shot at that as it uh, comes into view it looks like they've named that 3131 the newest named sunspot there on the sun and um, it kind of looks like it's a little active up here but either way we'll we'll take note of it as it uh, gets a little bit better view and gives a little bit better view to us in the coming days all right folks have a good night stay safe out there gonna get back to watching my movie here with missy mimi's and um again a lot of activity on the globe a lot um i think we've seen a, a pretty wide swath here around the pacific ring of fire here western portion with only minimal um, activity into the uh, Aleutian Trench area. That 4.1, hold on a second here. Let me go back here and check something real quick. Bring up the latest activity here. Where is that 4.1 coming from? You guys notice that on the globe here? I did not see that earlier. Is that from um, is that from yesterday? From the USGS 1023. Okay, so that's going to be yesterday. That's uh, probably should fall off the uh, map right now, as far as or at least the globe here. I'm going to turn the date down just well. Let me see here. Is that right? There we go. 24 hour map should cut off right there at that 4.1 from yesterday i was wondering about that because i didn't really see it uh listed up here on any of the other maps except for the globe but now i think um i think it looks good last 24 hours all right i'll get back at it have a good night folks we'll catch you guys uh very soon peace out everyone take care